Joining me right now is the Delhi Don, Jason Solomon, the captain of the Delhi Heroes. Guys, what's up? What's going on, man? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks for having me on the show, man. I really appreciate it. Um, let's get right into it. You got injured. You're out for the season. Can you break that down yes. for me? Yes, I had uh, so after my after my first fight, I had a two week uh, break before my next fight, and I was supposed to fight a uh, this guy from Brazil. They put him in put him in last minute, and so I was like, you know what? I don't want to fight a crazy international like high level Br Brazilian jiu jitsu fighter with no training. So I said two weeks. Let me maximize this two weeks of training. Hopped on a plane, flew back to Phuket. Uh, went to AKA Thailand this time. And uh, as I was riding to the beach one day, uh, just to do a little bit of like a run on the beach and some meditation and some yoga after the long day of training, on the way to the beach, this guy wiped out right in front of me for no fucking reason whatsoever. I mean, I don't know what the fuck happened, right? He just wiped out for no reason. And I had to slam on the brakes and I, I braked too hard. The, real, the rear wheel skidded underneath me. I kind of lost control. The bike fell out from underneath me. Long story short, I got about 10 stitches in the bottom of my foot, and the stitches are actually keeping the sole of my foot attached to the bone or to the, to the lower half of the skin on my foot. So it's kind of nasty. I'll show you guys. That's what my foot looks like right there. It's not really broken. It's not broken. It's a flesh wound. It's a flesh wound. It was a gruesome, gruesome injury. If you want to go look at it, you can go look at it on uh, Jason's Instagram, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, if you could go check out my Instagram, it's the Delhi Dawn. I put a video up there. You can check it out if you want to go see some gross shit. You can go see some gross shit. I got some cool shit on there too. If you want to go check me out? That's, uh, that'd be nice. Thank you. I appreciate the support. All right, let's go to your uh, your first fight, week one versus the UP Nawabs. You took on uh, Singh, a uh, guy, a power puncher. You did a good job yep. keeping away from his power. And in the second Thank round, you. you took it to the ground and you got that submission. You, you fight like one month a year. When you went into that fight, did you feel rusty? No, not really, man. I mean, I, I had a little bit of nervous energy, which is natural, but I mean, I was really prepared for this because I've been I've kind of moved to Thailand. I kind of live in Phuket now, and I was training at Tiger Muay Thai. I decided to switch it up this time, this season, and I, switched, I tried AKA with Mike Swick. And so I kind of like, I live at the mecca of uh, MMA fighters in Asia, and we're training almost every day, sparring almost every day, rolling almost every day. So you you don't really you don't you don't really feel too uncomfortable. And um, I don't know, I, I feel very comfortable in the ring. I feel very comfortable in a fight. Uh, I wasn't feeling rusty for this one at all. How has uh, moving to Phuket and training down there elevated your game? It's changed my life. It's elevated my game. I mean, I'm way better than most people I fight in India because I'm trading with such good coaches and I also have such good trading partners and, you know, just to be on the mat with them and rolling with them and even off the mat, even when we're not training, just, you know, just to see how dedicated they are, how they manage their time so well, they don't, they don't really have any distractions, you know, and whatever distractions they are, we manage them quite well because everyone is there for a reason and just being around like-minded people who are better than you and and makes you makes you really humble shows you that you know what you're, you're not the best and there's always going to be somebody better out there and that you just need to keep training every single day and learning something new every single day and just you know people do people do anything in life for two reasons this is what i found out in life People do things for one of these two reasons. Number one, either they're scared, so out of fear they don't do something or they do something or they fucking love it. And because they love it, they either do it or they want to do it. So you got to love what you do. And I love, I love fighting, bro. <laughs> I, love, I love choking people out. I love hitting the pads. I love, uh, you know, getting hit in the face. I love getting kicked. I mean, it, for me, it, it, it just makes me feel alive, bro. It makes me feel like I'm alive, bro. The pain, the, the pain makes me feel immortal. And giving the pain also makes me feel immortal. Because I'm like, I don't know. It's weird. I just love to fight, dude. A lot of big names go down to Phuket to train. Have you ever been on the mats and was starstruck by anybody? 
So I never really got a chance to roll or um, fight with anybody or, or spar with anybody that was super, super famous or super like, you know, like super, super well known. Um, I just got to take a chance to take a picture with them or like a selfie or whatever. But um, I mean, yeah, there's so many good guys out there, bro. I mean, everyone out there for me was better than me, you know, and I really don't get starstruck because they're a celebrity. I kind of get like awe and like the skill. I'm like, damn, bro, how'd you do that? You know, if someone like pulls the six submission on me or, and I'm like, dude, whoa, I mean, I'll tap. Of course I'll tap it. I'm like, yo, bro, that was fucking dope. You know, can you after class show me how you did that or like talk me through how you got there or like you know i am in i'm at all with the level of skill out there and and i'm also at all with the level of like friendliness and and camaraderie that you have with people there because it's like no one's really trying to hide their secrets you know they're all trying to teach and and show uh, show you how to be better and, and and help you be better and that's actually what i'm in awe of when i go to thailand yeah, that's kind of, I think a lot of people would be surprised with that because they know you as a person that is kind of very uh, expressive, likes to boast, but you just mentioned that, you know, when you're on the mats, you will ask somebody to show you a submission that they pulled up on you. You're not afraid to say you tap to a submission. Look, man, it's very simple. There's a business, okay? Like when I'm on TV, when I'm fighting in front of like hundreds of thousands of people, what is televised or even if it's thousands of people or hundreds of people, whatever the fuck you want to say, right? If I'm fighting to a crowd of people, I'm going to put on a show for those people. I want those people to remember me. Either they remember me because they do not like me because I'm a fucking cocky, arrogant prick, or they're going to remember me because they do like me being a cocky, arrogant prick. You know, and that is like a avatar or a facade. Like my name is not the Delhi Don. My name is Jason, but I go by the Delhi Don. That's me marketing myself as a brand. That's me trying to regist register in people's subconscious the brand of who I want J the Delhi Don to be. And this brand has a character, and the character is this loud, obnoxious, you know, smooth talking badass. You know, that's one part of my life that that's one uh, avatar of my life that I've placed in there and I have it on purpose. And that's not who I really am when I'm on the mats because you will never learn anything going into a gym with a big head and thinking you're the baddest motherfucker in there because everyone's just going to fucking beat your ass and they're not, and they're going to enjoy beating your ass and they're not going to like you and they're not going to want to train you or teach you or make you better. So you, you, a lot of gyms, uh, when you go to them or dojos, you go to them, they say, check your ego at the door or like, you know, leave the work outside, like come in here. That's, that's the sign of a true martial artist. Somebody that's willing to go into a dojo, go into a gym and like hang his head low and be willing to learn technique from somebody that may, you know, be able to kick your ass or may not be able to kick your ass, but has this one technique that you don't know of and can pull that technique on you. Like one of the cool things I see, right? I see black belts in a class in Thailand. I know, not just Thailand, even, even in, in India. Let's say anywhere you go, actually, a true martial artist, even if he's a black belt, yeah, he'll come into the dojo and he won't like be like, oh, I know better than this black belt. He'll listen to what the the teacher or the coach at that dojo is teaching and he'll try it, he'll learn it and he'll, he'll use it, he'll drill it, you know? That's what I think a real martial artist is, you know? And um, you, in, in, you know, a lot of people are gonna say this, I don't wanna be two-faced, or like, oh, I always say what I feel, or, uh, you know, I, I, don't, I don't like, I can't hide my emotions, or none of that shit. Fuck that, bro. Everyone is, everyone is at some point in time got a fucking mask on where whether, whether you're trying to make or meet a girlfriend, close a business deal, get more money from your, from your sponsor. You have to put on um, this role or you have to put on these faces, you know, to, to get what you want in life. And the sooner you realize that being able to play multiple roles and being able to have multiple personalities is not a fucking sign of mental 
like, you know, stupidity or like mental disease, these multiple personalities you have for a reason. Cause you can't, I can't talk to you the same way I could talk to like a 65 year old or a five year old, or I can't talk to you the way I talk to someone from India versus someone I talk to someone from Canada. You know, they all got different ways of approaching them and speaking to them. Now, the Delhi Don, you started your career in the Super Fight League. You, you fought every fight for the promotion. The Delhi Don, the persona has been developed throughout those years. If you could look, when you look exactly. back, when you look back, what is the most valuable moment that you've had, you know, throughout these years? Nine seconds, bro. Nine <laughs> seconds changed my life, dude. Nine seconds, bro. Everybody, I, I, I guess that's my claim to fame. I'm the cocky MMA fighter that got knocked out in nine seconds. And that nine seconds changed my life. But the thing is, I when would, you look at your record, that's the only loss on your record. You're eight and one, eight wins, eight finishes, most of them in the first round. Nobody can take that away from you. You know, that one loss, everybody gets caught. Look, man, everything happens for a reason. Yeah, I guess it could, you could say it was blown out of proportion, but you could also say, damn, I got knocked the fuck out. And it's pretty fucking funny because I walk out all fucking cool and shit and I get knocked out like cold, bro. So I watch my video and I laugh. I look at that shit like that shit is fucking funny. That shit is fucking hilarious. Share that shit. Like that shit. And people all around the world know me as, and know me because of that. So I love it. I, I mean, I would not take, go back and, like, change anything. I think it was a good thing. I think I needed to get knocked out. It made me a better fighter. I guess if I didn't get knocked out, a lot of shit wouldn't happen. You know, they say everything happens for a reason, and I'm a firm believer of that. I want to look at, like, every negative has a positive. So even with my foot right now, even though I, I, I injured my foot, like, days after my first fight, like, midweek through the season, uh, midway through the season, I can't fight anymore. I'm not in Bombay with my team anymore. Uh, a lot of things have not gone my way, but I'm home here, you know, thinking about the future and how I'm going to come back next season and like all kinds of things and like trying to find a reason why this happened, I'm trying to find a positive from it, you know? So I look at my failure as my, my failure as my biggest lesson. So the, you asked me what was the biggest thing I learned or the biggest thing I would take away. It was that nine seconds ago. Your mom and your brother are your biggest fans. Um, my dad, too. Your dad, dad too, of course. Well. Your whole family. Yeah. You're, they're there. My family, yeah, I'd say yeah. that. Your family, family yeah. is there. They support you through thick and thin. They're screaming the yeah, loudest. That's true. And yeah, that's true. <laughs> how, does it, how does it feel to have that support, you know, behind you when you're pursuing something that most people fail at? So it feels really good, man. I'm not going to lie. It feels amazing. It wasn't always like this. Initially, my parents were against it. My dad still is kind of negative towards it. Even my mom is still negative towards it. But um, they, they, they obviously, they care about me. They don't want me to get hurt. And they keep worrying about me getting older and older. And like, you know, this is a young man's sport, blah, 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 blah. I guess that, that support feels really good. I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's amazing to have the family support. And I'm so blessed that I have that support. And um, I just feel grateful. I feel grateful. And I wasn't always, I wasn't always the, you know, the proud fighter superstar uh, of my family. I have a bit of a dark past with, um, with, with the cops and jail and like stupid shit, you know? And um, I wasn't always like this role model, if you want to call it, for people. I wasn't always this inspiring. I had a little bit of a dark past. And for my parents to stick stick with me through that and help me get through that, I'm so grateful. And I think uh, that fighting or mixed martial arts was actually a way for me to get away from that dark past. And it did kind of save me in a way. And there's a lot of guys, you know, a lot of really good fighters who don't come from really good backgrounds and they kind of struggle their whole life. And, you know, fighting is a way for them, you know, to get out of the hood and get out of that struggle. Me, I'm the complete opposite, man. I, I didn't come from a bad neighborhood. I I'm, I'm, didn't come from, like, bad school. I'm not uneducated, you know. I come from a well-off family. I come from education. Um, I got a bachelor's degree in business, you know, worked as a banker, a sales manager. So 
um, for me, like having that back, that backup is, is amazing. And I feel, feel that like getting, going through that shit and MMA saved me in a way, you know? So it's for anybody. MMA is for anybody. It can save you whether you're rich or poor, whether you're smart or not smart. Like, you know, it doesn't really matter. It's a great lifestyle. It keeps you fit, keeps you healthy, keeps you confident, keeps you away from all the bullshit, you know, keeps your mind right, keeps your body right. So I think everyone should train martial arts to some degree in their life. As your popularity grows, as Super Fight League's popularity grows in India because of MTV, it gives you a more face time. Do you have anything else going on outside of the cage that you can talk about? Yeah, I love music, man. Music is one of my passions. Uh, I actually, the, the theme song for the Delhi team, the Delhi heroes, uh, when they walk out, there's a theme song. It goes, yo, Dilly, what up? Yo, Dilly, what up? Um, that song was actually written and composed by a friend of mine and me. And we actually, the composers and lyricists of that song. So we haven't released, released a video yet, but we want to do one soon. I love making music, man. I'm in the process of making some music right now while my, while my foot is busted. So I love making music. I want to get into clothing. Like I want to basically diversify. I want to use the brand JRS, the Deli Don, and make sort of like MMA clothing. So rash guards, MMA shorts, Muay Thai shorts, um, pads, gloves, shin pads, basically merchandise. Mm -hmm. I want to get into merchandising for, for mixed martial arts. and. Um, also, I would like to get into uh, like accessory for like men, like, you know, watches, sunglasses, maybe even like a luxury clothing line. Cause I love clothes. I love style. I love fashion. So music, fashion, dance. I'm like, I'm basically, I'm, I'm like a, an artist. So mixed martial artist, right? I'm a mixed martial artist, but I also like, I'm an artist in other ways, like music. I like to make music, clothing, uh, jewelry, accessories, you know, that type of shit, that type of stuff. The Deli Don, fashion designer, fighter, rapper, yeah. producer. Yeah, yeah bro. Uh, hey, clock porn maker, star. Porn star. Uh, porn star. <laughs> whatever you want. Whatever you need. I heard that uh, Japan, is, Japan needs some uh, male porn stars. They're running out. Yo, I don't know. I love, I mean, the Asian persuasion. You know, I got to love that. I got to love the Asian persuasion. All right, Jason, man. Thank you for your time. Hopefully your foot heals quickly. And we see you back inside that cage and continuing your run to, you know, whatever goals that you want to accomplish. And I want to like thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And thank you for giving me the chance to speak and give me some more exposure uh, to all your, everyone watching. Once again, please, you can get me on the Delhi Dawn on Instagram. It's the Delhi Dawn. I'm also on Facebook, same handle, the Delhi Dawn. So thanks, like, subscribe, share, whatever. And, uh, Thank you. Namaste and peace out.